Right, everybody, here it is. This is the Q Baja. Now, I've taken the body panels off. That's the first point, so just bear that in mind. I've made a few little modifications as well, so I'll talk you through those. Basically, I got this from RC Models, rcmodels.co.uk. I did pay for it. It was not given to me. At the moment, at the time of this video, it's £440 or, or £439.99. Plus, of course, you've got your postage. So it's four fifty. it cost me to get this here to my house. What do you get? You get this. A Fly Sky GT3B. I've never had a GT3B. I've got a GT3C. The only difference, I guess, is that the look of it. And this one takes eight AA batteries, which are there. It doesn't come with any batteries, so you need eight AA batteries for it power button on the back and uh, it's all you know digital kind of trims and so on and, and all that so it's good 2.4 gigahertz little antenna there I'd imagine that's perfectly good enough for this model and it's quite a good quite a good radio actually as far as an RTR goes you get a charger <coughs> for your nickel metal hydride battery it comes like this so you basically need an adapter to use it an adapter like that basically as a, as a minimum, I suppose. Very simple adapter, so you get that. You get some tools. You get a kind of uh, plug wrench with a screwdriver on the end of it, a couple of different uh, sizes. You get this multi-tool. You get some little Allen keys. A very incredibly light pop metal, metal um, multi-tool. That's like, like a feather. And you get one of these. So again, Wheel nuts and I guess different different ways of sticking your tools in. I think I guess you can stick that in there. That's what that's for. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I don't like the body, so I took it off basically. And I think for me it's going to break pretty quick. Little side panels that go around the back near near the near the sort of this area here, which I got rid of. Some stickers, some more bits of body body clips that were holding that on. Some lights, which obviously aren't lights, but they're little light buckets, I suppose you could modify this, these and put lights in if you wanted to. The original pull start that came on it, I've put my FID pull start on it, so you get that, it's got a plastic pull inside, but nothing wrong with that. Of course you'd want to do a mesh mod or something on it, put an outer wear on it, because it's full of holes. Uh, you get a Baja instruction manual, which is here, which is basically, it's very, you know, it's good, it gives you all the, the usual sort of details you're going to want in a manual and it seems decent but that is for a normal Baja so you get this page for the Q Baja specifically which has sort of a rundown of part numbers for that because of course it's different to a normal Baja so you get that little sheet as a supplementary bit to that manual but you get this fuel can actually with it as well which is pretty cool because you've got a an oil chamber here on this side, so you put your oil in here. I'm trying to read it, yeah, okay, so it says 20 to 1 and so on there. So you put your oil in here, you put your fuel in here, which has your litre mark just there, and then you shake it about, mix it up, and then you've got quite a good fuel spout. So you get that with it, which I think is pretty cool. I haven't used it yet, obviously, it might be a load of junk, but I think it's pretty cool, it looks pretty good, rather than using this style, which uh, I use normally but yeah you get that with the car so the mods i've done i've taken the body off obviously i've put an outer wear on the filter and oiled the filter and i've put a kill switch on it a switchblade kill switch which is round this side i'm an electrician so i've just used these wago connectors to be honest which is instead of soldering but that's just pure laziness to be honest and I've put on my FID pull start, because I had this pull start from another car, which, uh, well, my low C5T, I suppose, which now has a 50cc ALX engine in it. So I wasn't using it, and i got to say, they look awesome on a Baja, because it's sat there right in front of your face on the side, so it looks really good. So, and it works really well, so I've, I've put that on. So that is not standard. The winging doesn't come on the car, so I put the wing on. Uh, and that's it. So that's what the car looks like. It's a very short Baja. The chassis is different to a standard Baja. It's very short. Saying, normally you'd have the fuel tank in here behind the, the radio box. But on this case, it's at the back here, which is a bit of a controversial position for a fuel tank. 
It is directly above the exhaust. That's the exhaust there exiting at the back of the engine. Of course, it comes round here. So you can see that that is the fuel tank there. That is the exhaust there that goes under the fuel tank. So it doesn't touch it. There's about a 10 millimeter gap roughly in there. Uh, people are putting aluminium tape underneath the tank and maybe putting some uh, heat wrap on the exhaust there as a kind of precaution. I have heard some people have melted a bit of the tank. Uh, it was on a rollover. You can see there's this, this panel here. But of course, theoretically, it can push down on your tank and make it touch the exhaust pipe, which is going to be red hot so or roasting hot. So that's something to keep an eye on. I'm quite happy with it. I don't see a big deal. Uh, if it becomes an issue, there'll be a way around it, like a lot of these things. I did notice about the tank, while talking about the tank, I was thinking about getting an alloy fuel cap, which of course I guess I could get, but that looks mega cheap. I mean, that, that, that cap, I don't, I don't know what a standard Baja cap is or a standard Roven fuel cap is like, but wow, that is that is the cheapest. And just the tank, the way that the tank head is there, it just feels really dirt cheap, to be honest. But then again, I mean, this is, this is the first time I've had a Roven or a, a non-HBI car. And I wasn't overly impressed by the build quality on, on the HPI Baja I had that I bought used. That's part of the reason I got rid of it. I suppose I didn't really like certain things about it. And for £450, which is, what, the price of, can you get an ape scale electric car for that? At, uh, what's an E-Revo 2 now? £650? I don't know. So you can't get much. So you're getting a lot of car here for your money. So you have to bear certain things in mind. But that seems really cheap. I don't know if you can get an alloy cap that fits that head that that seems a little bit smaller than normal but i'm being nitpicky here but i'm going to be nitpicky because you know i'm trying to tell you about the car so fuel tank's different the steering setup is also different because you have a center servo here and it's got a sim steer i believe it's called so the, the servo's in the center line and the steering sort of connection is down under here well, it's a normal Baja, the servo's horizontal this way, or pointing this way, it's turned that way. And the steering's a bit weird as a result. You get a kind of, I think one, it's, it turns one way better than the other way, almost. So that's a bit of a weird thing about Bajas, but uh, this is better. And a lot of people put this set up on their Bajas as an upgrade, so that's good. A nice alloy brace here. Uh, the shock caps are alloy, but the, the actual shock mount is plastic. There's these kind of plastic covers here. One of my shocks was actually popped off its, its ball joint here when it came. So I just pushed it back on. That was in the box, I guess. You get the metal brace at the back and you do get an alloy clutch bell holder, but it's, it's that kind of cheap, it's not alloy, it's that pop metal stuff. It's a cheap version of that. So uh, that's about the size of that. Tuned pipe. A wheelie bar, which is different with the with the Q Baja, the little Baja, because it wheelies a lot. There is very, very little weight on the front, as you'd expect. Compared to the back, the back must weigh, I don't know, all the weight is over there. There's no weight here. So it's going to wheelie. Handling is going to be interesting. Cornering may be a challenge. I quite like the wheels, the nuts, nice black nuts, black shocks look quite nice as well. The shock action on the HPIs, and this is no different actually, I don't like. It's got shock socks down here, little plastic shock boots, which I quite like. But the shock action is, well, the back's not so bad, to be fair, although it's quite stiff and, you know, you can see there's not much in the way of actual rebound, but that's fair enough, but it's quite stiff. The front, with the lack of weight, I mean, look, I'm pushing there. I have to push quite hard to, to break that kind of, okay, it's moving now quite easily, but it can, it can almost kind of seize. I don't know what it is, but it's just the action is, I don't know, there's something about the setup I'm not a massive fan of. I also hate these circlip things. I wish they'd put captured, captured pins with a little nut or something, a little screw, but there's circlips everywhere on here. I guess it's easy, you know, if, if, you, if you snap a, 
a pin you pull the circlip off and put a new one on but they're so easy to lose so I'm not a massive fan of that idea but generally it all looks quite neat uh, I like the all black with nobody I like this little plastic guard here which basically is attached underneath it's a kind of skid plate I suppose and uh, it basically has these little stand-ups here to kind of stop dirt getting in to the uh, the the engine, I suppose. But it sucks in. It sucks in all sorts of dirt. That's the other thing that you've got to really put on these. You have got to put a crankcase outer wears on it or a, do the mesh mod to the crankcase because you'll get a load of grass stuck in there. Now, that's the one thing I haven't done yet and I'm actually not going to do it yet. I'm going to see what happens because I just can't be bothered. I know it's bad, but I can't be bothered to take the engine out and do it. I just want to use it and I've got little time, so... I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave it for now and see what happens. Tyres. Let me just talk about these very, very quickly. Uh, these are actually quite soft, which just surprises me. I thought they'd be rock hard. They're actually quite soft. But what I did notice at the back here is they seem a bit thin. And the foam actually doesn't quite seem to fit the shape of the tyre because it's got a bit of movement there i don't know it's a bit it's a little bit weird but they're, they're quite soft and that's quite good the foams feel decent at the front which surprises me because in the past i had basically sponge in the front of my tires on my old baja and the back's quite firm as well so that's that's quite decent i like the little metal plate on top 2.4 gigahertz i like the tray it's all very tight in here in this steering tray you've got your battery in there and you've got your servo stuff and you've got your kill switch now so, they're the additions you need to think about when buying something like this. Your remote kill switch, number one. Don't run without a kill switch. Number two, you're going to need a charger, realistically, better than that, I would imagine, if you're going to want to use it much. It's going to be a slow trickle charger, so you're going to need a charger that's decent. You're going to need fuel and two-stroke oil. You're also going to need an outerwear for your air filter, as a minimum, minimum. You're also going to want an outerwear for your pool start, and you're also going to out want an outerwear for your crankcase. So that's three outerwears that you're going to want, which are going to cost, you know, a, a, I guess 50 quid, <clears throat> maybe 60 quid for those. But number one, I think, has got to be the kill switch, because without a kill switch, you're just dangerous, really. You're causing danger to yourself, potentially. You're potentially going to smash your car up and you're also potentially causing danger, which is more important, I suppose, really, to anyone else that's local to the car. If it runs off and you've got no kill switch, that is a total nightmare. So make sure you get a kill switch, switchblade or whatever, you know, a reliable kill switch. I've had no trouble with switchblades myself. I'll do several videos in a sequence on this car and let you know my thoughts on it. Do some bash videos with it. And I'm hoping it's going to be fun. And let's face it, it is, I think, near enough the cheapest way of getting into fifth scale. Uh, other than the totally standard plain Baja, normal Baja, which I think is about 385, 390, approaching 400 pounds now. So either way, it's one of the cheapest ways to get into fifth scale. That's kind of, I suppose, well thought of. You've got the Yama stuff. But I'm not going to go into that, but... I think people generally think that's not very good. So, hope you like the video. Hope you're all good. I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy, guys. See ya.